What is up guys, we're back here at Warrior Sound Beats with another FL Studio tutorial. What we're gonna look at in this is how to use the LFO, the modulation control inside FL to control just about anything. So uh, let's get right into it. First thing we're gonna need, we're gonna need the control itself loaded on something. Now, no audio goes through it, it doesn't affect anything, so a good place to put it so you can always find it is on the master. Hit F8 and we can bring up our menu here. And the control we're gonna look for is Fruity Peak Controller. So if we start typing peak, it should highlight out for us. It's this guy just here. So we can just drop that on the master. And Cool. So what this guy does, it sends a constant signal out of an LFO, or it can also respond to the peaks of another sound. So I'm gonna show you what those two things mean and what we can do with it. So if we bring in a synth, let's just bring in Bass Master. Cool, so Bass Master's got these uh, range knobs here that are connected to the modulation wheel. Now we can't automate the modulation wheel necessarily. It has to be linked via uh, MIDI. So it takes MIDI input number one and you know we can't send uh, a MIDI output from here unfortunately. What we can do instead is apply it full and we can put say like the pre-drive and cutoff up here and it would then be affecting them. We'd be able to hear those notes. And we've just got the initialized patch here, just playing back a really simple pattern. But what we want to do is affect these parameters using that module automation, and we're going to use the LFO to do it. So if we move this parameter, we go up into tools at the top. We've got something called last tweaked. And you'll see it says Bass Master Mod 1 Amount, and we can create an automation clip on that, or we can link to controller. And when we do that, we have internal controller. It will find that we've got the Fruity Peak controller open, and we're gonna link it to the LFO. We can leave the mapping as default for now, and we'll see that nothing has happened. But it's now linked to the LFO. So when we introduce the LFO base level here, we'll notice that it's snapped based on this knob here, and you'll see they're now moving in sync. Now, if we introduce some volume into it as well, you'll notice it starts moving in time. So we can set the base that it starts from, and then we can set the amount that it moves by, and we can use the tension to adjust the type of waveform look or we can change the shape entirely. What's really important is speed here locks into or allows us to lock into relevant BPM parameters it's locking onto. So if we take it down to exactly four that's going to be our one over four different and we can see it moving in time there. And that right there is affecting the pre-drive. Now if we do the same thing, we'll link it to the cutoff as well. So we tweak the tool, go into last tweak to make sure it says the right thing. Link to controller. And we want to link it to the LFO again. Now this time it's gonna flash up here in red, remove conflicts. If this little light's on, you wanna turn it off because we're gonna link both together. And we now see they're both doing the same thing. Now we've made a nice wobbly Reese. Now we can do something else as well and have it so that the peak, the audio coming in from somewhere else actually affects this as well. So what we could do here is on the resonance, we're gonna tweak that and we're gonna to go to tools again, last tweaked. Uh, link to controller, I'm going to drop this down and we're, this time we're going to link it to the peak and do the same type of link and just as before we need to engage it so when we adjust the base we now see that that moves 
and the volume amount is going to move by. Now this is going to be affected by any sound coming through to the master. So you can see the resonance is now being controlled by the peaks of those drums. Cool, so that basically allows us to link up and control absolutely anything we want in FL Studio and we can tie as many things as we want to that one LFO and then when we adjust the speed, everything that's linked to it will adjust in terms of speed as well, which is really useful. So you can see that the pre-drive and cutoff here are both running at 1.4. If we right click on the speed amount, create an automation clip, that's going to keep running at 1.4 here. If we then move it up to 8, which is right around here, I'm going to right click and we're going to copy value. I'm just going to create a new point in here and above, and we're going to paste in the new value. We can change the rate at which the LFO will automate throughout this pattern. Cool. So let's just disable it real quick and listen to the difference. So that's our loop without the automation from the Fruity P controller. Now if we enable it, I hope that's opened your eyes up to what you can do with that and taught you a little something about the LFO inside FL Studio. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I will see you guys on the next video tomorrow.